After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to bribe bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about five thousand in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. We'll stop there for a moment. Miracles are for making a point. When Jesus did miracles and when the Gospels record these miracles, they're for making a point to us. And miracles happen constantly. They don't just happen in Bible times. They happen around us too. So the real question is, do we get the point? When we see these miracles, are we getting what God wants us to get? In verse 4 of what we just read here, it says the the Passover was, was near. Now, that means, basically, it just maybe it kind of caught you as an incidental detail, but it means something here. Passover means that freedom is on everyone's mind and nationalistic zeal is high. So, during this Passover, they're celebrating the exodus out of Egypt. This was a big time of celebrating freedom from slavery. And the, the nation, the, the nation of Israel, for them, is on everybody's mind. This is almost like the 4th of July for them. You know, our Independence Day, this would be their Independence Day. So, this is what's on everybody's mind. In the verse 2, it said also that the people are following this man, Jesus, who performs miracles. So they hadn't yet proclaimed him to be the prophet that was to come, but, but they see these miracles that this, this man is doing, and so they're following him. And it was kind of this continual thing. The verb is, is continuous. So Jesus was doing miracles, and people were following him because he was doing miracles. He's healing the sick. Okay, so... This guy, I want to see more of what he does. Now, John didn't record all of these miracles, but we are pretty familiar with what they are, considering what the Gospels say. And then Jesus says, these people need to eat. He sees them, and they need to eat. And so he gives his disciples, Philip, and most specifically, he gives them an impossible task. Where are we going to get bread to feed all these people? It says in the other Gospels, this, this is one of the miracles that's recorded in all four of the Gospels. So we have a lot to compare it with from what the other witnesses say. And it says there were 5,000 just men. That was just the men. That's not counting the women and children. So in other words, there is a huge crowd here probably about 20,000 at least. It would probably be a good guess. 20,000 at least. And so, Philip is like, seven months wages wouldn't even be able to buy enough for everybody to just get a little piece. 
This is way too much. But they're given an impossible task. We tend to notice the miracles when the task is impossible. There's all kinds of miracles that go around us all the time, but we tend to notice them when the task is impossible. So I think this was part of the test. Jesus wanted to say, okay, let's feed all of these people. So Jesus feeds maybe 20,000 at least with five loaves and two fish. And this is, this is a miracle. I'm trying to imagine what that would be like. You're breaking apart these five loaves and then there's these two fish and you're just breaking them apart and then there's this sea of people in front of you and you're thinking, I only have this little bit. And they were, how am I going to feed everybody here? So once you have food, of course, everybody's going to be swarming towards you and you're going to be starting to give things away, but somehow everybody gets a bite. Had to imagine that actually being there and actually seeing the impossibility of the task of having to hand out food to that many people with just this much food would have been amazing. So the people noticed this. It says, when people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. That was verse 14. And then in verse 15, it says, perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountains by himself. So they missed the point. They wanted to use Jesus for their own ends. Because at that time, Rome was in control. And they were not exactly a, a benevolent dictatorship. It was an oppressive regime. There were lots of people who would be publicly executed and stuff like that. You had to pay a lot of taxes. And so the people of Israel were kind of like, all right, this is a little bit like Egypt again. We, we need another Passover. We need another Exodus and so this next prophet who's going to come into the world, everybody thought, or lots of people thought, that this guy was going to overthrow Rome and liberate us from the oppressive regime. And Jesus wasn't that. He was a big disappointment to everybody. But they wanted to come and take him and be, have him be king by force. We're going to make this guy our king. And so Jesus had to basically run away in order to keep that from happening because this, is not, this was not the point. They were not, Jesus was not there to liberate them from Rome. He was there to liberate them from something far greater. If you have your Bibles open, let's read a couple more verses here. Starting at verse 22, going through 27. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. So there, Jesus had to run away. Now the crowd that saw this miracle, they're chasing him, basically. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for on him God the Father has set his seal. They were interested in filling their bellies. They had eaten the bread, they had seen it multiply, and so here's somebody who can feed us forever. And so Jesus points this out to them directly. You guys are following me for the wrong reasons here. You just want more food. Now, in a country, in a time like ours, where we have plenty of food to go around, this, this might not mean as much to us as it would have to them, where 
you kind of live a hand-to-mouth existence. You don't always know where your next meal is coming from. So if here's somebody who can just produce food like that, here's somebody who means that we will never go hungry again. So let's make this guy our king and he'll feed us forever. It makes sense. When you're hungry, this makes sense. But they miss the point. And Jesus says that to them in verse 27. You miss the point. This is not why I fed you. I didn't feed you so that you would make me king. I didn't feed you so that you could just have full bellies for the rest of your life. There's bigger things going on here. And I'm here for that. When you're hungry, it's hard to think of anything else besides food. They even have done studies on this. You know, they give, they've had some volunteers and they give them just kind of a bare minimum of nutrients. And suddenly these people, when they're just at this bare minimum of nutrients, all they can think about is food. They, they think it constantly. They dream about it. It's all they talk about. And they even read cookbooks for fun because food is, is everything. And yet Jesus is saying there's more important things than food. You miss the point. Feeding the 5,000 was meant to show Jesus as the bread of life. That's in verse 35. I'm just going to read that. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. You say that to a, a hungry and a thirsty person, it might, it might strike you a little harder. Never hunger, never thirst. But Jesus is giving them bread so that they would see that He is the bread of life. You can eat all kinds of bread here and you'll just get hungry again and you'll get hungry again and you'll have to feed yourself again. But if you take me, then you will never be hungry again. Miracles are not meant to indulge us, but to point to Jesus. They're not meant just to satisfy our cravings. They're meant to point us to who Jesus is and the bigger things that are at stake. Even bigger than food. When uh, I was younger, our family would take an annual trip to Cedar Point. So uh, it would be the Reesman side. So it would be me and my aunt and uncle and cousins and grandma and grandpa and we'd, we'd always go out to Cedar Point and we would always stop in Toledo at the hotel there. So we'd, we'd leave on Friday night, we'd stay overnight in Toledo and then we'd drive the rest of the way to Sandusky and we'd spend Saturday there. But imagine... It's, it's impossible for me to imagine just getting to the hotel and wanting to stay there. Not wanting to go on to Cedar Point with all the cool roller coasters and all of that excitement. To just stay at the hotel. The hotel is a way station on the way to Cedar Point. You stop there for a moment so that you can get to the destination where you really want to go. Miracles are meant as a, like a way station to point to something else. They're supposed to point us to who Jesus is. And we see miracles every day. We do. We don't often think of our daily food as a miracle, but really it is. I came across this quote. It's on the screen here. It's from... Augustine, who was a, he was a theologian in the, the 5th century there. He said, Certainly the government of the whole world is a greater miracle than satisfying 5,000 men with five loaves. And yet no man wonders at the former, but the latter men wonder at. Not because it is greater, but because it is rare. For who even now feeds the whole world but he who creates the cornfield 
from a few grains. So when you see, when you're driving along the road, and some of you, as you actually plant your crops, and you see the sprouts and, and it growing, that's a miracle. How did that happen? And some of us, some of us are unfortunate enough that we just have to go to the grocery store and we think food comes from there. And then we just sit and eat it. But this is a miracle. And it's something that we see every day. We don't think anything of it. The food on our plates and the health to live and move are all miracles. It's amazing that we can put something in our mouth and sudden, and we get energy from it. Our bodies can run off of it. This is actually fuel for us. And we can have health and strength from it. That's, that's incredible. And all of this is from God. Psalm 104, this is your Bible reading track for today. You cause the grass to grow for the livestock and plants for man to cultivate, that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread to strengthen man's heart. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. All the earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open their hand, your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. All of this is from God. So it would be pretty incredible if you were one of those disciples and you only had a few bits of food in your hand for, to feed a sea of people. But every piece of food that we have is really something from God, something that God made. Let's look at the screen and let's answer this together. What does the fourth request of the Lord's Prayer mean? Give us today our daily bread means do take care of all our physical needs so that we come to know that you are the only source of everything good and that neither our work and worry nor your gifts can do us any good without your blessing. And so help us to give up our trust in creatures and to put trust in you alone. So even our food and the nourishment that we get is from God's hand, and that's a miracle. We should be looking to God for everything that, that we need. So miracles are to make a point. And we get to enjoy these miracles all the time. Do we get the point? Like the crowd, we are apt or inclined to think God serves our appetites. That's why God exists. So that our appetites can be satisfied. So that our itches can be scratched and our desires met. We have a tendency to use God for our own ends. And I see it in myself. And I've been walking with God my whole life. But I still find myself using Him for my own agendas. So it's something we always need to pay attention to. So they followed Jesus so that their will would be done. They wanted what Jesus would give them. Like the crowd, we would like to use God for our own ideas of freedom too. We are very much into our personal rights and what we can get, what we can claim, what we can use against others. We all love less taxes, for example, and we'd love to make that claim and God is used to advance political agendas all the time. You can hear politicians invoking God all the time so that they would get elected, so that their agendas would be furthered. This is a tendency in all of us. We all want to use God for our own ends. But God's miracles are so we would believe in Jesus. That's why we have miracles so that we would believe in Jesus as the bread of life. And many times in the Bible, we are pointed at this. Acts 22.22, 22, 
Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. God showed that Jesus was real because of the signs. It was so that you would believe him. Acts 3.16, And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And then in Luke 7, 21 through 23, John's disciples come to Jesus and say, are you the one really who is to come or should we expect somebody else? And Jesus responds by saying, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news preached to them. The miracles confirm Jesus so that we would believe in him. Jesus is our true food that comes from heaven. He is the bread of life. And when you believe in him and put your trust in him and you belong to him, you will never hunger again. And I'm not talking about physical hunger. We have food and we eat it and it nourishes us and we live and we can have energy from it. With Christ, you have Christ You believe in him, and you live by him. Not just now, but forever. And only by knowing and following Jesus will our our souls be satisfied. Not only will we have eternal life from him, but our full souls will be satisfied. Not just our stomachs, but for our very reason for living will be satisfied. We'll be satisfied in ways that we never could be from any food. We were created to know and to love God. And when you know and love Jesus, you are fulfilling the purpose for which you were created. And the people here, they wanted freedom. They wanted freedom from Roman oppression and considering what they had to deal with, how can you blame them, right? But Jesus is our true freedom from oppression. Whatever might oppress us in this life, Jesus is our true freedom. He is our Passover lamb. He is our exodus and our Red Sea from which we leave our oppression. So Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Only Jesus can set us free from what truly oppresses us. And only by trusting Jesus will we have freedom from sin, guilt, shame, addiction, approval, fear, and the list can go on. These are things that oppress us. And you don't need a Roman occupying force to have this kind of oppression. There's a lot of oppression that goes on even in this country and in this room. And we all, to some extent or another, have this kind of oppression that we have to deal with. These are things that control us, that dominate us, that tell us what to do, that keep us from doing right and make us do wrong. So I want to put something out there for you today. It's better to live in North Korea with Christ than in the United States without Him. Because if you can be free from this, then you have true freedom, no matter what sort of outside oppression you might have. There was a woman from 1961 in the Soviet Union. She was on her fourth prison term. And she said, in prison the most difficult thing was to live without a Bible. That was the hardest part. The Word of God, that bread. There was a guy who was delivering Bibles to Cuba and then he was, he was uh, brought in because they caught him and he was being interrogated in prison and put in an isolation cell, deprived of sleep and all this kind of stuff just so that they could get him to confess and figure out what's going on. And he said, and under interrogation, the Holy Spirit gave me a measure of pity and compassion for this man that was interrogating me who was more in prison than I. 
True freedom is knowing Jesus. True freedom is being free from these things. So give thanks for all miracles. You're going to run into them today. You're going to see miracles. Give thanks for them. Rejoice in them. This is, a, this is why at least I am in the habit of praying before I eat. Because I need to give thanks for this meal. And I need to remember where this meal comes from. So even if it's just a short, silent prayer, I always pray before I eat because that reminds me of where this came from in it, and I give thanks for it. I would encourage that habit in you too, if you don't already. And in response to the miracles, get the point. Believe in Jesus. That's the point. That's what we need. So I'm just going to close with John 10, 37-38. This is Jesus talking. If I am not doing the works of my Father, then don't believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Believe in Jesus. And let's bow our heads and let's pray. O oh Lord our God, you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, in whom we may believe. So Lord, help us to believe in him this day. And even if we already believe in him, to believe in him and trust in him even a little more. So that, Lord, we would see that you are the source of everything good. And that, Lord, we can be truly free from what ails us. And we pray all things in Jesus' name. Amen.